When I bought this old abandoned house in the middle of nowhere, in lovely, beautiful, warm, sunny Spain, I was thinking, if I buy seven solar panels, each one is 500 watts, this will give me 3.5 kilowatts per hour under the ideal conditions. Obviously, dust on the panel, the angle of installation, and the shade might reduce the efficiency. So I followed the recommendations and reduced 20% of my number to get more or less realistic number, which is 2.8 kilowatts per hour. And of course, the production is limited to the daytime and it will vary from winter to summer. So for winter, for my area, I have nine hours of sunlight every day in average. Let's say I'll take a half less than a half. I'll take four to be pessimistic. And this will be my conservative estimate of hours of production. So I need to multiply 2.8 at four hours per day and I will get my average daily production, which is 11.2, right? So oh, it's absolutely not true. I'm going to share the numbers for my house, my reports, how much energy I get with my seven panels. And the main thing, if seven panels are enough to power my house in Spain, we're close to equator. One sec, side note. I connected my entire electric system myself and I shared it in a previous video. And there I shared the mistake that I made that I connected uh, solar panels plus to inverters minus and vice versa, I connected minus to plus, plus to minus. And in the comments, there were people who were saying that this mistake is not actually rare, that it's quite common. So if you are going to connect your solar panels soon yourself watch that video first it's important thing to know so in previous video i asked you what do you think about my electric kingdom i have seven panels each one is 565 watts and what do you think if it's enough to live here in spain comfortably or not comfortably or live or survive so here is the suggestions these seven panels for nine months now. I had them first on the ground on the side of the house and then I installed them on the roof. On the roof that has the positioning ideal for solar panels. It's facing east-south. No, south-east, which they say is the best position possible. Also, it has the inclination of 30 degrees, which is not bad as well. During these nine months, I had quite a few surprises. First, the predicted energy generation appeared to have nothing to do with reality. Second, the optimal position of the panels is not what they say. And the biggest surprise for me was that my 7 panel 565 watts each appeared not to be enough to power my house that doesn't have a lot of appliances and is located very close to equator in Spain. I'll start with the first one. The predicted energy generation has nothing to do with reality. If you search how to calculate the potential generation of solar panels, you'll find something that I have shown before. You take the number of your panels, you take the maximum potential generation of each one, you multiply these together, you reduct 20% of loss, and then you take the number of sunlight hours in your area during the lowest months, which is nine for me, more or less a half, because not all hours will be productive. And as a result, you will have your potential predicted average generation, which was 11.2 for me. The calculation itself is a little bit rough, because it doesn't take in consideration the positioning of solar panels. If you position them on the north side of your house, it will be a little bit different than if you position them on southwest, southeast, or uh, south directly. It doesn't take the inclination of solar panels and the important thing, it doesn't take in consideration the azimuth that the place where you're going to put your solar panels have to the sun. But luckily there is an official app from the European Commission that says that the data you get here is 
based on real-world data and should be very close to the real-world results. Let's take a look. Here you can input the exact location of your house. You can pick it on the map and it put and input it very precisely. Here you can input the address or just the point on, on the map. Now here I'm selecting off-grid because I'm not connected to any other source of electricity. Here you can input peak PV power, which is for me 565 watts. For each battery, multiply on 7, which gives me 3955 watts. This should be in watts. Then this line, battery capacity. This is to tell you how many days you might have with full battery and how many days you might have with zero battery. This doesn't impact the production, obviously. I will input here the real number, which is... 18 kilowatts and I have discharge cutoff limit when the battery will switch off automatically not to drain the battery to end 10. Now here you can input, very convenient, your consumption per day. I will input zero for now because for now I want just to see the generation. I'm, all, I'm not interested right now to see the battery status, the consumption. I only want to see generation. Later I will input the my daily consumption. And what is very important here you can input the slope, which is 30 for me, and azimuth. This is very important number. The angle of the solar panels relative to the direction due south. I used another app to see my exact azimuth. To find out my azimuth, I used this app. Let's say this is my house. You can pick here where exactly the solar panels are located, on this side of the house, on this side of the house, or here. And then after you picked the side where the solar panels are located, you can move the angle here to see what will be the azimuth when the sun is shining directly on your solar panels. If I have solar panels on this side, the sun is shining directly at this angle at this time of the day, at 10 a.m. Here I have 133 that I need to input over here. But the thing is that this app understands only from minus 90 to 0 and from 0 to 90. So it will be uh, 47 degrees in this system. And here let's input the exact location of that house. Now let's see the results. This house that I'm showing on the video is not mine. Uh, but uh, it's in the same location, same altitude, it, and has the same data that I am getting. So, it is saying that in July I'm supposed to have 19 kilowatts. I have no idea if this is true, because in July I wasn't thinking about this. But let's see what it's saying for December, the lowest months, and here for January. It says in lowest months, in December, there should be 8 kilowatts of energy generated during the day, not every single day, but in average it should be 8 kilowatts. Obviously there are days when there are more, there are day, there are cloudy or rainy days when there are less, but in average it should be 8. 8 is a little bit lower than 11.2 that I calculated before according to the recommendations that you can find on the internet. So I would say that this data is a little bit more precise than calculation that I've done before. I will leave the links to both of these websites in the description to this video so you can use it as well. They say on this website of European Commission that this data it's not theoretical it's uh, gathered from the real world data from other people so it should be more or less precise but for me it doesn't coincide as well the thing is that I'm not going to install solar panels I already have them in this exact location in this side of the house facing this angular with this inclination with everything I already have them and I have the data during the last six months that doesn't coincide with this at all. It's very optimistic. Let's take October, for example. One note, when the battery are charged to their set limit, for me it was 75% in October, they stop generating energy. When they reach the limit, we cannot see the maximum potential production in reports. But starting from October, my batteries almost never have been full. So solar panels should be working at their best ability to fill in these batteries. And this data can be more or less reliable. There were a few days as uh, high as 7.2 kilowatts during the day the generation and there were days as low as 
2.5 kilowatts. As you can see, average that I got in October was between 4 and 5 kilowatts in October. And the prediction app was saying what? That I should be having 8 kilowatts in December and in October 12. While in reality it was between 4 and 5 kilowatts generation in average per day. I didn't understand why the prediction app calculates like this and as a programmer I had an idea that I checked. I put the exact same data, the same slope, the same azimuth, the same number of solar panels. I input the very same data, but for the house that has the same latitude, but close to the coast over here. It's just 100 kilometers from me and I got the same results. The, the thing is that the climate is very different here and next to the coast. Though the distance is not very far, the climate is very different. I'm in the mountains, 700 meters above the sea level. It's about 8 degrees warmer on the coast at any given time of day and night. I'm not saying that temperature impacts the uh, solar panel generation, it doesn't. But the weather that causes the temperature as well, the weather impacts. Here it's very normal that we have fog and clouds up until 11 a.m. And then we have beautiful, lovely, sunny weather until 6. Now I'm talking about winter and winter is uh, November, December, January, February and March. This is winter. Now in the winter it's uh, around zero every night and during the day it's around plus 15. While on the coast in Valencia the temperature never gets lower than 10 degrees. So this app, though it's more precise than this rough cal calculation that I've done before, doesn't take in consideration altitude and it doesn't take in consideration the climate. I guess it should but it doesn't. There are other things that impact production, for example, dust on the panels, the shade, the length of cable, the system loss, the inverter itself. I wasn't thinking about all this during the summer. It was beautiful. I had enough. But on 30th of October, after we had these huge floods in Valencia region, it became a thing. It was raining all day long on 29th of October and it's very rare here that it rains, it almost never rains here. It was raining all day long on 29th and on 30th I woke up, I woke up with zero in my batteries. A lot of people were asking me how I'm doing with floods and everything. I feel like I won a, lot, a lottery with the location. Very close to here, just 12 kilometers from me in the village. It was everything that you have seen on TV. This. Uh, all these awful things. But here uh, there were no floods, a lot of water, yes, but no floods. So the next day it was absolutely lovely weather. It was sunny, it, there was no single cloud in the sky. After 11 a.m., just as usual as it happens here. Let's see how much energy was produced during that day. In theory, the solar panels should have been working at their best ability to fill in my empty batteries. This is the generation for the 30th of October and it actually coincides with what I have in average for October. From 4 to 5 kilowatts per day in average. The data in my app might not be super precise because I don't have a very good inverter and also I switch off the house for night to save some energy. So the data is not sent to the cloud. But it's precise enough to see the general tendency. I took a look at the champion day in October, which was 24th of October. The solar panels produced 7.8 kilowatts of energy at that day. And I was wondering how this day is different from others. Why there was so much production during this day. And here is the answer. Solar panels started producing energy at 8 a.m. There was no fog at that day and no clouds during the morning. So at that day solar panels were producing three hours before the usual time. And yes, and that day I had 7.8 kilowatts. But this is super rare. So does the prediction data coincide for you if you have solar panels. And also, if you have a good prediction app in which the data coincide for you, share it in comments, please. I think it would be helpful for others to know as well. So my conclusion was that for me, seven panels wasn't enough to live during 
the winter months and I ordered seven more panels. I couldn't afford to install them right away, so I had to put them exactly on the same place where the previous seven that right now are on the roof were before I put them on the ground next to the house. So now I have seven panels on the roof and seven more panels on the ground. Seven panels on the roof are facing southeast and these new seven panels are facing southwest. I connected these seven panels on the night of 21st of November and 22nd of November was the first day when I had 14 panels instead of seven. And 24th of November was the very first day in November when I had batteries charge reaching the limit. And what is important that after I connected seven more panels, I rarely woke up with batteries charged less in the morning than 50-60%, while before it was very usual that I wake up with 25-30%. And this situation continued in December. I didn't have very low battery during the morning and up until now, until January. This thing that I couldn't have installed solar panels on the roof turned out to be the source of new information for me. In the afternoon, usually, I don't have any clouds. And while these solar panels on the roof are not charging anymore after 3 p.m., the, the set of other seven panels still keep charging. For winter, it's super important. So now I'm thinking, instead of installing these seven on the roof next to the, to the other ones, I'm thinking to put it put them on this side of the house, on the west side of the house, which is not recommended usually. But I think for me it would be much more beneficial to, so that next winter I can gather more sun from this side during the afternoon. I think it was a good idea for me to plan for 14 panels in the very beginning, but to install just seven and then to see if the seven would be enough and if no, install more, which happened to be my case. Now I have 14 solar panels, the inverter for 11 kilowatts and batteries for 18 kilowatts for storing all this energy. By the way, I installed and connected all this system myself without any previous uh, experience and without much knowledge and without any special tools. And I made two videos about this before. I will link one of them above. One recommendation that I was given, and I think it's a good one, is to install the better inverter. Because for summer it wasn't a big deal, but for now I think it plays a notable role because uh, this inverter that i have it doesn't think very quickly so when th there is sun and there is no sun when the sun is out and then when there is cloud there are clouds it takes some time to realize what is happening and to adapt the energy uh, generation i cannot afford to do it right now but i think it's a good idea and this is something to, that i should have in mind for future the day after the floods when i woke up with zero charge in my battery i not only decided to to buy seven more panels but also i was thinking about the ways i can balance better my consumption to preserve some energy you can guess which electric appliance and i don't have anything unusual in my house consumes the most please share in comments i'm very curious to know what other people think because for me it was uh, quite a surprise to find out which appliance consumes the most I'll share the appliances that I use, how much they, they consume and what I do to balance my consumption better to preserve energy in the next video. But this is another story for another time. Bye!